Celtic have been dominating at club level domestically, but that changed tonight when they took on Club Bruges. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. Normally, you can bet on Celtic to win, but I bet on them tonight, and they let me down. They let Son of Scotland 90 down. They certainly didn't win the first half. <laughs> oh, no, they didn't. Right, this first half shite's getting old, and it's getting old real fast. I wish Celtic won both halves tonight, but they didn't. They've screwed me to money. Aberdeen screwed me to money last night. I'm sick of getting screwed out of money. Two shite teams, and this is the best Scotland have to offer, man. Celtic and Aberdeen, one and two. And look at them. Can he buy a win? Neither one of them. No, they didn't. Well, based on the last 40 hours, like 24 hours. 24 hours. Anyway, let's go to the start of this game. Celtic, start 11, was as expected. Club Bruges, um, I mean, Simon Mignoli in there, a few other players I know, but I'm not going to claim to know all of them. Well, I mean, now that you mentioned the start 11, I just want to point out, I think Scales has been done dirty. I think he's been done dirty. He's effectively dropped now, right? He's no longer seen as the starting... And that's not me saying that because of Carter Fickers. We'll get to that in a minute. No, it's nothing to do with Carter Fickers. For me, I, I think Trusty has got better in recent games. And I think he certainly looks a lot more comfortable and he looks a better defender than he was when he first came in. But do I think... I mean, first of all, I don't think Scales done anything worthy of being dropped. I don't think Scales deserved to be dropped. And I don't think Trusty's performances were that great or at least that much better than Scales that I just don't see why Trusty but then again look I get it you spent what five million six million on him I would have like you didn't Celtic didn't spend six million on a defender to come in and play back up to Scales I totally get that yeah but no. <laughs> they spent nine million nine point five million on a straight a shite striker to play but back the problem up to is Fielders, right so who knows? Celtic got enough money in the bank to be like, well, you know what, yeah, we paid five for him, but we need to play for the guys actually in form. And for, yo, Trusty's been in good form. I'm not saying he's been bad. No, he has been. I just think it's a bit, I feel a bit bad for Liam Scales that he is effectively now the third choice centre-back, and I don't know what he's done to deserve that. No. Anyway, right. And that's the point. I, was, I wasn't, it's not a dig on Trusty or Carter Fickles. I just don't think Scales deserves to be dropped. No, I'd, I'd, And I'm not saying Celtic won this game uh, with, it, with Scales playing, because I don't think that's the case. It's yeah. a mistake for Carter Fickers. It happens. It could happen to anybody. could happen to anybody. It's a uh, shame it didn't happen when they played Hearts, but nah, I've got... I mean, this would just... You'd never get a gift like this domestically, would you? No, you wouldn't. But again, here, good press for Club Bruges. May as well just talk about that first. I mean, honestly, we could talk... I mean, I thought it was an even start. I, I think... I honestly think a lot of the pundits were going a wee bit too much in and Celtic. Because see, at the end of the day, if Carter Fickers doesn't do that, they win the game. Well, goals change games. So I'm not I, gonna... As you know about me, Saturday night, first half, oh, two deflected goals in the second, goals change game. No, but I don't think Celtic were that bad tonight. I thought they were pretty good in spells. There's this problem. Nah, sometimes you're just a, you're, you're, um, you know, you're a failure of your own success. Yeah, you know, you can't... I, I think it's just because of some how good Celtic look, have been. Like... Some people look at Leipzig and say, well, why didn't we do that tonight? Well, I'll tell you why I didn't do that tonight. One, well, A... It was, it was a special performance, really good for Celtic. B, Club Bruges are better than Leipzig this season in the Champions League. Leipzig have lost five games in a row. I think that's fair, actually. At this point in time, Club Bruges are a better team. The league table suggests that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Leipzig could have went 2-0 up at Parkhead. They could have, but they didn't. And Celtic obviously won 3-1. But tonight, I thought Club Bruges are a decent outfit. Um, I mean, you, you look at the match, there wasn't met. There wasn't much between the two sides. It took a wonder goal for Celtic and it took an absolute disaster from Celtic for Club Bruce to score. I think, I mean, on it, I mean, you can't take goals out of the game, but I think a draw was definitely the, uh, the fair result. As for Cameron Carter Fickers, let's get on to it. Captain America shot himself. There is no two ways about it. It's a strange one. It's almost like. They're but almost I, hinting at Kuhn. Oh, it's Kuhn's fault. Kuhn's passed it to Carter Fickers because he's under pressure. Carter Fickers should look. Where Smichael is, by the way, it is very strange. See, see if you were, see if you were watching, see if you weren't watching the game, or you you turn it away and you literally just flicked your head back. You would have thought Celtic were on the attack. I mean, Kuhn was literally running towards his own goal on the edge of the Celtic box. Yeah, that, that just shows you how much football is a fall because that would never have happened. See, years ago, he got, su got subbed off for that. No, you just never in that situation. It was. If you have the ball and you're in truck, you just clear it up the pitch. But yeah. now it's like with the press and we just and Celtic tonight on numerous occasions were comfortable playing the ball out for the back. But on this occasion, I guess they just tried to and sooner. But you know that 
you're always that's going to happen, man. See if you're a team that's comfortable trying to play your way out of trouble. All it takes is one mistake, and you, you're going to gift an opposition opportunity, or you're you're going to end up unfortunately passing into the back of your own net. But I mean, it, it was. I'm not blaming Kuhn, like, but. I mean, it was strange. Like, he, he literally was entering his own box and playing a pass to Carter Fickers. Look, it was strange for him, but for me, uh, it's 110% Carter Fickers' fault. At the end of the day, though, yeah, I mean, you can you can spin it and say Carter Fickers cost Celtic two points tonight. Is it Carter Fickers' fault or is it Rodgers' fault? In what way is it Rodgers' fault? Well, the whole well he, well, he, uh, I'm assuming that's the way he wants them no, to... No, it's Carr Fickers' fault, man. But he, how he has soon... to look. He has to look to see if he's there or not. No, I think... This it's... isn't a no, this isn't a no-look pass 50 yards up the pitch. This is a no-look pass to his own net. Well, no, I'm not saying it's Rodgers' fault, but does Rodgers need to accept that playing this way, you're going to get the, the odd consider goal like this? Yeah, but Carter Fickers should know here that here maybe I, I should look when I do this ball. All right, then can we can we point any blame at Michael? I think he was out of position. Yeah, well, obviously he was out of position. Look, I'm not. All, I'm obviously I'm not blaming Brett Rogers. I'm not saying he ran onto the pitch and scored the own goal, but I'm saying does Rogers need to accept that if you want your team to face the face attack and press like this and try and play your way to danger rather than just hoof it up? Do you need to accept that? Goals like this will sometimes happen. Yeah, I think you do. I think the reality, yeah, because obviously, I mean, that's what I mean by you know, because if Fickers doesn't pass into the net, he passes to a Bruges player. He passes to. So rather player. than rather than blaming Fickers or blaming, I think the problem is Michael runs for Kuhn and then it takes him out of position. So what's Michael? I mean, yeah. So you think Michael's offering Kuhn an option as a pass yes, for a pass? We're, and... we're currently seeing the replay here. That I mean, that's what I thought at the time. Kuhn gets it, he runs back, Smeichel's quite clearly doing that, and then, you know what? I get that for Smeichel, but for me, the, the the important thing for a goalkeeper is you stay on your line and you get ready in case the ball's lost. For me, Smeichel should not be, Smeichel shouldn't be going towards the corner flag to, to offer Kuhn an out. You know what, it's still Carter Fickers' fault, but for me, that is... That's, I just, would, that's just a mix up at the back. I wouldn't really blame anybody. I don't think it's it's just a, one of those things. Anyway, it's 1 0. Uh, Club Bruges. Worth their lead at this point? Eh, probably. Uh, probably. They had a, few, had a few chances with Olsen, uh, etc. etc. After this, Celtic had a flick with Kyogo. Hatati had a, a header saved. Thought Hatati was pretty poor tonight. Tell you what, see if Smeichel wasn't wearing the slippers. He maybe got back in time to stop that. Though. I don't know. He needs to take the slippers <laughs> off. But that took us into half time. And then we get the goal for Dyson Maida. It was a wonder goal, good goal. Dyson Maida continuing his fine form. Any complaints? Could Mignolet have done better here? Or was it all over? Nah, it was a great strike for Maida. Cut in, just right into the corner there. Couldn't ask for much more. I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. Dyson Maida, great player. There's a reason why he's always picked for Japan. Normally starts for Japan as well. Kind of crazy that he's always starting for Japan over Kyogo. Sometimes Kyogo doesn't get picked. I don't know, no, yeah, great finish, man. I mean, it's a Champions League worthy goal at the end of the day. I mean, Celtic have to... Are pass. you surprised that Celtic have never experimented more? With, I know he has played through the middle when there's been injuries, but you're not surprised that Celtic haven't tried... Ugh, maybe a wee bit, but then at the flip side of that, well, why don't Japan try what Celtic do, you know what I mean? Where, where is it? Where do you draw the line? No, that's true, actually. Yeah. You know Good what I mean? Point, yeah. I think, do, you think Rod, do you think Rogers and the Japanese manager have, like, regular phone calls to discuss... Where they think it's best to play Maida? No, I don't think so. Oh. But uh, I, you know, I thought after this Celtic kind of grew into. How do you say broad ball in Japanese? No idea. Are you gonna do a rhyme on eight and pretend that you can't answer that? I can't. I can't <laughs> answer that. I just. I just don't know what the Japanese is for it. I can give you the broken English Japanese version, like. But oh, let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, two one. Then it goes Rick disallowed. Juggler, Jukla, whatever you pronounce this guy's name. He, yo, he's just offside, right? It's 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 offside. But you you have got Joe Hart on commentary saying he's miles offside. I mean, come on, Joe, come on. No, he's offside, but is this is this heel? It's not a lot in it, like. But it's offside. Ah, it's offside. But it's not miles. Rightfully so. Back to one one. Uh, I mean, I, I thought Atati at this point was getting pushed off the ball rather easily. You know, the the gate subs are made. James Forrest is on. A few other players are on. But in the end, I think both teams kind of just settled for the draw. Club Bruges kind of realised, you know what, we'll probably take this. We're away at a tough place. 
And then Celtic, yeah, they had a few chances, few free kicks, few corners late on, but yeah, nothing to really. Yeah, it looked like Club Bruce were happy with the point late on. They weren't yeah. really committing many bodies forward. And I think a point's a fair result. Uh, Celtic, yeah, a wee bit under par. I don't really know too much about Club Bruges. I mean, to be honest, we, we kind of expected Celtic to win this game, but when you actually look at it on paper, where Club Bruges were in this league table, who they've beat, the results they've put in. Had, yeah, uh, you know, I don't, a draw is not a bad result. I mean, people will let you think. I mean, uh, yeah, Celtic can feel a bit dejected because I think with this draw tonight, uh, uh, they're not going to make top eight. But reality is that was always going to be a bonus. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it was a winnable game. They haven't won it, but they're still in a good position to qualify for the next round. However, I mean, you could argue if they slip up in their next game, then the pressure is on. Yeah, and uh, talking where they are, they're 20th in the table, so that's only four spots above, you know, going out. Madrid and PSG are below them. You would have thought, considering how, you know, how well they've been and how much we've talked them up, you would expect them maybe Celtic to be higher. But no, the problem I mean, is... At the end of the day, they're in the bottom half. We keep saying, they're oh, in the bottom half. Madrid and PSG are below them. Obviously, Madrid played Liverpool. But I have no idea who PSG and Madrid have got to play. Yeah, for, I mean, we're saying, oh, well, PSG and Madrid are going to finish above them. Are they? You mean, you would... And that's what I and don't... And PSG are four points behind. You see, that's why I'm not a big fan of this competition. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying they like it, but I think it's pretty much impossible to predict really how it's looking until the end. PSG, right? They're away to Salzburg. Yeah, I know, but um, we're not, you're not going to look they're at They're at home to Man City. Well, you're not going to look at all they're the... They're away to Stuttgart. Aye, you're not going to look at That's all the... That's plenty. Fi- you're not going to look at all the fixtures for, like, the teams surrounding your team. You're just not going to do that. No. To me, it's, it's very strange. It's like, the for a lot... <laughs> The games don't really feel important till the very like last few fixtures, but also there'll be a lot of teams that go into the last few fixtures like with their dead games. Yeah. Like, see if you win your first six, you're probably going into the last two games not even needing a point to finish top eight, and there'll be some teams that maybe lose the majority, maybe lose six, and then they're going into the the last two with no chance of qualifying. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously up next for Celtic and Champions Dead League, games. it's Dynamo Zagreb. I think the problem with this game is that Zagreb are on seven points, and they will. this is their Hail Mary, because Zagreb will feel like, well, you know what, we need to beat Celtic. How? Who? Well, realistically, they're always saying 10 points, getting 99% chance, 10 points puts you through. So Zagreb will only think, they'll, they'll, if that's true, they're thinking... Here, we don't need to just beat City. All we need is win one of our last three games. Aye, but, but I get what you're saying. A win for Sagri puts them... I, I not would, only does it put them onto 10 points, it puts them above one of the teams they'd probably expect to be finishing close to in this table. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then, if Sagri beat Celtic, you know, young boys at home, young boys are the worst team in the competition right now. So at the end of the day, you would expect Celtic to beat them. But what Celtic don't really want is going into that game against Young Boys needing to win because the pressure then will be on the Villa game. Uh, if they and you know, Celtic can definitely go to Villa Park and win. I don't, I'm not saying they can't, but that's the last thing you want to avoid. And all, and all of a sudden, your Champions League campaign at one point that looked absolutely fantastic is derailed. But I don't think it's going to derail. I think they're going to go through quite comfortably at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, have you got any closing thoughts there? Cost me money, I'm no happy. They cost me money, and you're no happy. Anyway, guys, that is it for the uh, the. Oh, right here, it's, a, it's another, it's another point, isn't it? It's another draw for the coefficient cup. So, the coefficient cup. No, well, I mean that is it at the end of the day. Um, but to sum up, Dynamo Zagreb's next three games. I just wanted to take a wee eye on this. Away to Arsenal and at home to AC Milan. So I think they'll be putting all their eggs in the Celtic basket. Would you agree with that now? Well, I maybe. I mean, they're not going to go to the end, but it's, I mean, uh, beating AC Milan at home's doable. Anyway, till next time. I tell you what, uh, uh, an Argos ad just came on there and they were showing all these cough machines at over a thousand pounds. Cough that, machines? Man, I certainly wouldn't be paying over a thousand pounds for a cough machine. What? Is it cough machines? Is it coffee. Coffee. Well, we've got a coffee machine, don't we? Uh, it didn't cost a well, grand. Uh, it did not cost a grand. Anyway, till then. Shout out to cough machines. Shout out to cough machines. Peace.